Hey everyone, I'm Will, and in this video I want to share with you some simple and effective techniques for creating a dramatic black and white image in Lightroom. We're going to start off with this RAW file and finish up with this result. You can follow along step by step by downloading the RAW via the link in the description below. All you'll need is Lightroom or you can even use Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. As always, if you have any questions at all, leave them below. I appreciate your likes and please consider subscribing to the channel as I've got plenty more videos on the way. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we are in Lightroom. We've got our source file here, this RAW file. Let's pull it up. We'll go into the develop module. You can see straight up, we've got that nice high contrast light here all throughout the scene, areas of light and dark, highlights on these rocks, highlights across the wave, the surface of the sea, and then light in the sky as well, along with different tonality up there um, in those dark clouds just makes for a great uh, monochrome black and white image. So let's have a look and see what we can do. Firstly, I'm just going to straighten this bad boy up because he is all over the place. I'll just straighten that up there and get out of that crop tool. All right, first thing, I'm just going to raise up the exposure, get this a touch brighter, like so. And I want to raise the shadows for that foreground. Now, I don't want to go too much because then the eye won't flow into the background. We want the brightest area to be back here, which it currently is. If I raise these shadows up too much, the eye will just get stuck there. So for now, that's enough. We might do a local adjustment on that later on. What I'm going to do straight up now is go to our black and white conversion in the top right hand corner here. And you guessed it, it strips the color, converts it into a black and white image. And now we have this black and white drop down box previously in the color tab that was for the hue saturation and luminance basically working on your colors but converting to black and white it goes b and w and what we have now is the option to manipulate basically the luminosity of those different colors in that file so you see you pull the yellows up here it's boosting anything in the scene that had yellow in it boosting the, the luminance i'm not really going to dabble in that too much my goal really is to obviously create a more dramatic image here. We've got all the elements. We just really want to draw the eye into that wave and create a sense of the power of the storm um, and everything that was going on on this given morning. We showcase that beautiful wave that's breaking and that glorious light. Firstly, the sky, you know, we have beautiful tones up there, but it's just kind of washed out a little bit. What I'm going to do is use an adjustment brush. I push K on the keyboard we're going to minimize this for a moment. This is the masking box. And here we go. I'm going to bring down the exposure firstly, and quite obvious what that's going to do, just darken things down. But doing exposures, darkening every single tone. Now I'm going to actually dehaze, and this is a, a bit of a contrast adjustment that it's doing here, the dehaze. If you look at the histogram, watch how that adjusts as we pull that down. You see those darker tones just pulling down, but it's not really affecting the light up there, which is good because we don't want to bring the, the light down too much, which is what the exposure did initially. Now I'm just making sure those darks come down and that's how we're getting that drama in those clouds. You could even play with the blacks, you pull the blacks down, but that's probably going to go overboard a little bit for us. Now with the light up there, we've got those beautiful light beams, which we're really losing. With a new brush, I've pushed K, I'm just going to bring up the highlights and the whites. You know, the whole aim here is to bring areas of light and dark throughout the whole frame. So I'm just going to run along the whole horizon and then these pockets of cloud put the highlights and whites back into those because when we reduce the exposure, we somewhat undid their brightness. So this is just creating more depth back there. With the same brush, I'm just going to keep running along and hit the ocean as well now see how that goes for us run through on the wave while we're at it and that's enough for that one so if i hover over the mask you can see where i've generally gone with that doing the whites and the highlights now i'm going to push k again this time i just want to reveal some of those rock details with the shadow slider just enough and what we'll end up doing here is probably boosting the the texture too and just get some extra gritty contrast detail going on in this front section like so so i've just hovered all over that rock area 
you see my feather is 100, so this brush is very soft on the edges. So if I go outside the lines here, as I did, it's doing a very small percentage of whatever my adjustment is. And that's why I like leaving the feather quite high, soft brush. Now, texture, we're gonna crank that up a touch for that rock, the clarity. So look at what that's doing now with the whites, those little highlights in there, they're really starting to pop out. I want this to really be a strong, sharp portion of the frame. And then as we drift off into the distance, things get a little bit hazier and that's how we create depth and separation through the image. We can even have a play of the highlights there too. Obviously, I just gotta watch out because I did, as I said, I went out over the rock there, you'll see on the mask. And as I'm bringing the highlights up, it is popping that water a little bit. It didn't matter too much when I was doing the the black, or the shadows and the texture. But now after highlights, we could create a halo. If you're in that situation and you wanted to perhaps, you know, get rid of that, you can simply click this minus button up on the mask, use a brush, which is like basically an eraser now. And then I'm just removing that adjustment from there, like so. You can see that it's just going a little bit more up here. There we go. All right, let's do a new brush now. And this time what we'll do is just pop some of the light on the wave. Bring the whites up, highlights to a degree. You're, you're just guessing that first time when you apply something to your brush. You apply it and then you can obviously tweak the result. The curiosity's got the better of me, so I'm just running along this whole section here, especially that part of the wave. I don't want to do here too much because it's already got enough light on there. All right, I'm just going to crop in slightly while we're here just to really bring the eye to that wave. I don't need all that space on the left. And now look, got the horizon line on that third. So we've got a nice balance going on. I'm actually going to bring it down a touch though. Crop in, all right, bang. Now I feel like the eye really just flows into that section better instead of having the big open space on the side. I want to do some global adjustments now. We're just going to hit the contrast. Look at our histogram. So we've got not many bright tones in this image yet. Contrast will bring the darks darker and the brights brighter. I don't want these rocks to get too much darker. So let's just see. You see what's happening there? But, you know, high contrast is the key, as I've said enough times already now. And we'll pull the whites up a little bit too. See the histogram is now pushing to the right. That's good, getting that really high contrast going on, helping to push the eye into that back area. Now, let's do some mid-tone contrast adjustments using the curve. So when we did the global contrast here, it was making the highlights go to the right, the shadows go to the left. And that's where we're gonna to start to clip and lose detail in areas. If we work on the tone curve in the lights and darks, it gives us the ability to boost the mid-tone areas so i'm boosting the lights now which is more in the mids not the highlights like so quite high and then we'll just do a touch on the darks going down that's what you'd call an s-curve adjustment it's quite subtle in this case but see the whites have gone up and then the blacks go down so creating a subtle s that's the s-curve you've probably heard that term before so let's have a look where we're at Cool. I think what we might do is maybe darken the left-hand side of frame. I don't mind if our light source is somewhat coming from this top section. So if I darken the left, it doesn't defy logic in the sense that the sun should be coming from the left. You'll see what I mean. So I'm going to just use a, uh, a graduated filter. We'll click the uh, mask button. We're going to go new linear gradient. I just still call it the grad filter, the graduated filter. Just bring the exposure down a little bit and we'll just drag in. Remember what I said, I'm trying to lead the eye to the center, to the wave. There we go. Just darkening it down a touch. Maybe a little bit too dark in that top corner. Again, if it was, you could use the subtraction tool and get rid of that, but I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna push K. We'll grab a new brush go larger and this time i'm just going to create some soft diffused light whites about 25 let's see 
why can't I get 25? It's annoying my... There we go. <laughs> Sometimes I just have a certain number in mind and I want to get it on there. And the key now is to actually rehaze, which is somewhat decreasing contrast, but it is useful in creating this type of light. Now, this is probably going to be a bit overboard. Maybe. Apply that. I'm just going to go all around the wave now like so and dial it back a touch bring the whites down probably a little bit overboard as i said cool go back to the global adjustments click that and I dial back the highlights a wee bit i feel like on the wave in particular is maybe getting a little hot all right now there is a dust spot here which Using our spot removal tool, we'll get rid of this guy. Should do a good enough job for us, hopefully. Let's find out. Yes. All right. There's another one. Uh, there's two over there. Let you guys clean those up if you want to muck around with the image. My apologies for having those. Um, looking in the sky now, sometimes what I'll do is control minus and just zoom out a touch. I don't always like working full screen but depending on your monitor size as well i like to just have a bit of breathing space a bit of framing around the image to just take it all in to kind of step aside from it all i'm going to click the mask tool i want to find out where i hit the sky i don't like how that beams going beyond uh our white cloud here i don't really want to have light up there it doesn't really make sense it's probably this one so we can um subtract with a brush hopefully this is the one anyway and we can just dial it back there we go keeping that darker darker edge like so and that was our first one what was this one here probably this one too we can subtract with the brush just a bit of cleaning up really guys to be honest and we'll just nip that off nice there we go now it's not so obvious going over the top i might even darken down this area because that is quite bright so we're going to push k new brush bring the exposure down initially and we'll just see what we can do here it's probably a bit too dark but bear with me this is what i mean you just need to apply it and then tweak it later on once you've painted in the area might even increase the contrast just so the darker tones drop off that we don't lose all the light there. Like so. Alright, there we go. One thing you can also do, like I showed you at the start, jump into the, the black and white tab and have a little play with the black and white mixer. But just go easy. I find that the when you're pulling these up too much, the separation looks really unnatural you know you're lifting that specific color or tone and it's leaving behind everything else and then you can see what's happened to the sky there it, it has become quite nasty let's have a look see all that bending and everything obviously i've cranked that to 100 but uh yeah i just you might not realize maybe it's somewhere in the rocks or something everything looks good and then later on you see it um so I generally don't like to go in here too much, the black and white mix. So I just find it easier to manually make those adjustments. Another thing with uh, detail, contrast, etc., would be if you wanted to sharpen, but just sharpen the edges, which is going to mainly be these rocks. What you can do is crank up the sharpening. And then on the masking, hold down Alt, slide this forward, and this is going to mask it off the brights and only leave it on... The darker tones or our edges look i'm looking at that rock there for example like that so now we've just got that really sharp defined edging on the rock work there we go so let's do uh before and after with the backslash key that's what we started off with and that's where we've ended up bringing much more just a different feel isn't it it's a it's more of a timeless look there's a bit of mystery there and uh, i believe a lot more drama too no doubt you could make a beautiful image from this original raw because of the colors that we have so much beautiful light and color throughout 
um, but I think the black and white does make a good conversion. Uh, in reviewing what I've done, maybe that darker sky up here, it kind of unnaturally drops off. Instead of going through and finding the mask that did that, you could potentially just raise up some blacks and shadows on a brush and just fade that out so it's not such a stark difference in the tones in the sky darker on the edges and then fades in you get the idea like so the last thing i might do with a new brush k just create a bit of atmosphere so rehazing all along the distance like that and pull the highlights down a touch the more I look at it, the more I think I've definitely gone overboard on that cloud. So this is why it pays to analyze the image. Take your time. I'm going to go right back to that first graduated filter. There it is there for the sky. And let's just dial that back, hey. It's looking... This is why I like leaving the thumbnail on the left. You're just getting a different perspective on the image instead of being pulled in so close. And there we go. It was probably just a bit too stark contrast i wanted that drama i wanted that darkness because that's also symmetrical with our dark foreground but i think it was just a bit over the top anyway guys the next step for me my workflow would be saving this and then coming back and doing a few passes over it so multiple visits to just make those fine adjustments similar to what we did just there and that's how i would do a black and white conversion on an image like this Okay guys, hopefully that helped you out a little bit. As I said, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll get back to you and I'll see you in the next video.